So here is another example of a limiting reagent question. In case you're struggling with this concept, maybe seeing another example might help you to consolidate your understanding, strengthen it, and so on and so forth. Uh, all right, so here is the reaction. I've got a reaction here, and the question is saying, well, if I react 75 grams of manganese peroxide and 45 grams of uh, HCl, hydrogen chloride, uh, how many you know grams of water will pr be produced and how many grams of excess reagent will remain? So first off, um, you know, I want to highlight for you that they're giving us in this question two reactants quantities, right? The quantity of manganese dioxide is 75 grams, and the amount of HCl is 45 grams. And so that should highlight for you that this is a limiting reagent question. The reason being is that, you know, unless magically these quantities are in the absolute right proportion, there's likely to be one reagent that is used up completely with the other one um, having some leftovers. And so in chemistry, we need to determine which reagent, this guy or this guy in this case, uh, is going to get all used up and which of them is going to be left over because that's going to determine how much product we can make. Um, all right, so uh, let's take a look at this. And so uh, if I want to figure out how many grams of water I'm going to produce, I need to first determine which of these two reactants is the limiting reagent, and then from there use that to coordinate to figure out how many moles of water and then mass of water I've created. Uh, so hopefully you saw this reaction equation and right off the bat you knew that something didn't look quite right because I have, you know, four chlorine atoms on the product side, but only two on the reactant side, or only one on the reactant side. So I'm going to change that by balancing my chemical reaction equation, and that's going to affect the amount of the proportion of water I produce. So always a key uh, when you're working in stoichiometry to balance your chemical reaction equation. Um, all right. Now, in my previous expanded lesson on limiting reagent stoichiometry, um, we talked about what it is we would do next, and we can't really analyze and compare these values uh, of these masses of rea uh, reagents in grams. So we're going to swiftly convert to moles. So my moles of manganese four oxide are going to be equal to 75 grams divided by the molar mass of that substance. And so when I look on a periodic table, and uh, my periodic table, and I add up the individual masses of the atoms in that compound, I'm getting this value. But depending on the periodic table you use, whether it's outdated or whatnot, and uh, depending on how many significant digits it highlights molar masses in, uh, that might be slightly different. Um, so working that out, and you can see the nice unit cancellation here. I'm getting a value of 0 0.863 moles. And I'm going to round that to three significant digits, given uh, this 75.0 grams. And so I'm going to do the same thing uh, for my number of moles of HCl. And so I have 45 grams, 45 grams. Let me just get that a little tidier. Uh, divided by the molar mass of HCl, and that's going to be 36.46 grams per mole. Uh, from Again, from my periodic table. Uh, which is going to, and I normally wouldn't do this, I'm going to squeeze this in in the same line. And that's going to give me a value to three significant digits of 1.23 moles. Okay. Uh, so that, I would say, after I've balanced and after uh, I've written out some givens, this would be job number one, would be to convert those values in moles. And so now it's my job to look at the proportions in the balanced chemical reaction and determine, well, if I use up all of one, how much of the other am I going to need? So I'm going to say, all right, well, I'm going to pretend that I'm doing this reaction, and I want to say, well, if I use up all 
of my manganese dioxide. That's the 0.863 moles of that substance. How much HCl am I going to need? So I'm going to cancel out my moles of manganese dioxide. And I want my moles of HCl to remain. My balanced chemical equation is telling me that for every one mole of manganese four oxide I'm using, I am using four moles of HCl. So four moles of HCl, I'm going to need four times as many moles of HCl as I do MnO2. So multiplying the number of moles of MnO2 by four gives me a value of 3.45 moles. And look at my unit cancellation here. That will remind me what I found in case I've lost track. Uh, that's moles of HCl. So I have this many moles of HCl, okay, that would be used or needed. Okay, so that is needed if I want to use up all of my manganese fluoroxide. Okay, and so now I need to look and say, well, how much do I actually have, right? So I have 1.23 moles of HCl. Uh, and so what does that tell me? That tells me that I have not enough. Okay, so I don't have enough HCl if I use all of my MnO2. What that's telling me is that my HCl is limiting the amount of product I can make. I'm going to identify it as my limiting reagent and my MnO2 as my excess reagent. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to do is identify which is my limiting reagent. Because, of course, whatever is, is going to run out first is going to predict how much product I can make. So my moles of limiting reagent is what I'm going to use to figure out the moles of, of any product that I'm looking for. Uh, all right, so there we go. Um, so I'm going to just switch this to a different screen, and, uh, and then we'll kind of maybe go back and forth uh, to figure the rest of this out. All right, so in the last uh, segment of this example, this is where we were so far. Um, I'm, so I'm just going to write down a little bit of information. We figured out that, first of all, um, the HCl was our limiting reagent. And we also determined that we had 1.23 moles of it that would react completely. And so we're going to use that in this next step to figure out, well, how many moles, how many grams of water did I produce? So that's my next step. So I'm going to call this uh, step number, uh, I guess that would be step number three here. Uh, step number three. So here we go. I'm going to say, well, I know that my 1.23 moles of HCl is all going to get used up. Um, so if it's getting all used up to make water, how much water can I expect to make? So I've got four moles of HCl that get used up for every two moles of water. And if I wanted to, I could have used the reduced version of that proportion, but eh, it's all good. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and work that out. So 1.23 um, divided by 2. And that's going to tell me that I'm going to make 0.615 moles of water, right? Um, and that makes sense, right? Like, let's think about this. I'm making half as much water as I am uh, HCl, right, uh, based on those proportions. So, you know, half as many moles. So now that I've got that value, I can go ahead and finally just convert that into a mass value. And so I know that my mass of H2O is going to be equal to my number of moles of water times the molar mass of water, which I can get from my periodic table. So I'm going to take that 0 0.615 mole. And I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass of water, which is, you know, two hydrogens and one oxygen should give me a value of 18.02 grams per mole. Uh, resulting to three significant digits, 11.1 grams of H2O. Uh, okay, so overall, um, what steps did I take here? I balanced and then I converted both reactant values to moles. I decided which was the limiting reagent based on which quantity gets used up first. 
and then use that to predict my uh, moles and then mass of product. Uh, all right, so now we're ready to kind of take a look at part B. Um, so often a question will say, well, I want to know if I use up all of my limiting reagent, how much of the excess will remain? Uh, and so, you know, that's reasonable. Maybe you want to know uh, how to maybe gauge things better. Um, and, and so let's go through that process. Uh, all right, so in the previous step, we identified that we had 1.23 moles of HCl of our limiting reagent and that we had 0.863 moles of our excess. And so uh, let's just keep that in mind. And so if we're trying to, if a question asks you, well, how many grams of excess reagent uh, will remain, they're really saying to you, well, after all of your limiting reagent gets used up, how much of the left are there left over of the other reagent? Okay, and so you can kind of come up with a sort of like an equation for that, if you will, uh, where you say, well, um, you know, I mean, the excess left over is going to be equal to the starting amount of excess minus the amount of excess that was used, right? And so the difference there is going to give us the amount of leftovers that we have. And so I know that I am starting with 0 0.865, uh, or 3 rather, moles of MnO2. Um, and so, but not all of that's going to react because I'm going to quickly, I'm going to use up all of the HCl before all of the MnO2 can kind of react. So there's going to be leftovers there. But this is how much I'm starting with. So if I want to know how much leftover there is, I need to say, well, how much of this actually reacted um, and how much, you know, with the HCl? So I need to start with doing a ratio there. So I'm going to say, well, if I have 1.23 moles of my HCl uh, and my balanced chemical equation tells me that I'm using four moles of HCl for every one mole of uh, MnO2, uh, then I can figure out how much MnO2 proportionally should have been used up if I use up all of my HCl. So I have one mole of MnO2 for every four moles of HCl. Okay, so proportionally speaking, that's going to tell me that I am actually using 0.8. 3075 moles uh, of MnO2. And so I'm going to look at my significant digits here and round that to three sig figs. That's going to give me 0 0.308 moles of MnO2. And now remember that is, those are moles of MnO2 that were actually used to react with all of the HCl. Okay, so this is how much I'm actually using of MnO2. Okay, and I want to compare that to how many moles of MnO2 I actually started with. Okay, and so um, over here I've got my excess left over that's going to be the amount that I start with, the 0 0.863 moles. And I'm going to take away how much I actually got used, uh, and that's the 0 0.308 moles. And the difference there is going to give me what the leftovers are. Okay, and I'm getting that that's 0 0.556 moles of MnO2. Now, the, did the question say grams? Yes, it did. And so I'm going to have one final step. So I'm going to call all of this step one. I'm going to call this step two. And then my final step is going to be to convert that to a mass value. And so my mass of MnO2 is going to be the number of moles of that substance times the molar mass of that substance, okay, which in this case is 0 0.556 moles times the molar mass of magnesium uh, for oxide, which is 86.94 grams per mole um, from earlier on. And so working that out, 
uh, I'm getting approximately, you know, 48.3 grams. Uh, and that's of excess. Those are the leftovers. Uh, okay. All right. So hopefully uh, that example will help you kind of um, with your understanding of these limiting reagent questions uh, and reach out with any help that you need.